war. What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more coverage on Transformers Rise of the Beast. The hype train is going full speed ahead and shows no signs of stopping, especially when it comes to Beast Wars in general. You may not notice it, but Hasbro and E1 have a new roadmap in place on how they want to introduce the Beast era cast to a broader audience. For better or worse, the Bay movies have done it with the G1 characters, but now they want to move on to the second generation of Transformers, which is a brilliant move because that means that they can sell more toys and pull in more modern fans who want something different besides car robots. So far, we've gotten a new Beast Wars comics from IDW, Optimus Primal is featured in the Combiner Wars series from Go90, Cheetor made a few appearances in Transformers Cyberverse, and there's the new Transformers Kingdom show on Netflix that'll feature the core Beast era cast. So if you're noticing a subtle usage of these characters throughout all the different mediums, it's not a coincidence. Consider it a rollout, similar to how it was done when the Beast Wars show originally aired and we were getting introduced to the new class of characters. And this new Rise of the Beast film will be at the forefront of that rollout since it's the biggest form of TF entertainment. Anyways, as you all know, Rise of the Beast will take place during the 90s, so as you'd expect, there'll be 90s type vehicles that'll be featured for the Autobots, which we had heard about through various descriptions, but we didn't really get any pictures revealing what they look like. That's until now. There's recently been a few pics of what the Autobots were going to look like in this upcoming film. Firstly, we have to look at one of the most recent and controversial reveals, that being Mirage. This will be the second time he's been featured in a Transformers live action movie. And you're probably asking yourself, wait a minute, when was he ever in the live action Transformers movies? Which is totally understandable because we didn't really hear the name Mirage mentioned in any of the movies. That's unless you played the Dark in the Moon games or bought any of the toys. Instead of hearing the classical G1 name, he was simply referred to as Dino in Transformers 3. Initially, when it was heard that they were changing the name, fans including myself were not only confused but also upset about it, because it felt so unnecessary at the time. But what we didn't know is that Paramount and Hasbro were pretty much forced to swap his name out. His alt mode was a Ferrari 458 Italia, and originally they were ready to give him his original designation, but at the time of Dark of the Moon's release, Hasbro's rival company Mattel had an exclusive license for the Ferrari toys. And the Ferrari company didn't want to break their original obligation and have their product placement sporting the name of a Hasbro toys trademark. So in order for Hasbro and Paramount to get permission to use that vehicle, Ferrari demanded them to change his name to Dino, which was the name of Enzo Ferrari's son. So the production team had to jump through a few hoops to even get that variation of Mirage in the movie. This time around though, they actually have the name Mirage, but many fans are wondering why they didn't give us the complete version of the character. Because as you see by the picture, this isn't exactly faithful to its original G1 alt mode, which was a Formula 1 race car. Instead, it's what looks to be a vehicle mode swap from another Autobot member, that being a silver Porsche. And if you're somewhat familiar with G1 or at least know another silver alt mode for an Autobot, then more than likely, you're thinking of Jazz. Like, I don't understand for the life of me why they're so apprehensive about bringing my boy back, but they refuse to put some respect on his name. It's been 14 years since he got off in the first movie, and we're finally getting some G1 love with the alt modes, but you can't bring him back with a brand new coat of paint? Instead, you give Mirage a second shot because you know a lot of fans don't realize he was already featured in Dark in the Moon, and Paramount knows that there are going to be viewers who confuse Mirage with Jazz anyway. I mean, there are still idiots who confuse Sideswipe with Jazz just because both of them were silver in the Bay films. But I digress. When we do eventually get Jazz, he most likely won't have his signature G1 vehicle form since it's already being used for another bot. Anyways, I'm sure they'll still do the character of Mirage Justice this time around, and I can imagine that they won't have an unnecessary accent to complement his alt mode. As you can see, there are two Porsches, which many of you have theorized that it could possibly be a hint at his abilities. But having two of the same vehicles on set has been a tradition since the first Transformers live action movie. One simply used for the action sequences, while the other is used for all the beauty shots and close-ups. There were only two Camaros that were hand-built by GM. To fix that car is a big deal. If you smash a fender, you just don't get another bumblebee fender because there aren't any. All the parts were individually made. It's a three-stage paint. If you get a ding in the door, you have to paint the whole door. They're brand new. They just came out, and uh, they gave us three of them. We got them from the factory black and made that tailgate that had the Autobot logo in Boston. But moving on, the next vehicle mode we're about to go over isn't necessarily an official reveal or on-set photo. Instead, this vehicle reveal comes in the form of a toy. 
During a behind closed doors event, Paramount revealed this particular alt mode that was described to be a Z28 Camaro with off-road upgrades such as big knobby wheels and roll bars on the bumper. We didn't get a chance to see exactly what it'll look like, but this RC car from the Bumblebee movie promotion is basically what we'll be getting in the upcoming film. If you want a confirmation if it'll look like this in the movie, Optimus Prime Productions, who's a very reputable output when it comes to Transformers news, said that it's indeed what it will look like. And to me, this is brilliant marketing that harkens back to the old days where the toys for the characters were made in events before they made their appearances on the show. This could also be a form the producers wanted to include in the first film, but they scrapped the idea since it didn't have a logic or context behind it. But I think it'll be fitting for Rise of the Beast since the Transformers will most likely be taking their fights off the streets and into the wild terrains. Not to mention it could possibly mean that B could potentially be a lot bigger in his robot mode since he's supporting bigger parts this time around. Like, I can imagine that the reinforced bars on the bumper are going to look very similar to how the bars looked on Ratchet's chest in his robot mode. I could be wrong though, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But moving on, the last one we have is a possible look at what Optimus Prime's truck form could look like in the movie. And I put a lot of emphasis on the word possible because it's still up in the air on if this thing is legit or not. Last month we got a small glimpse of what Robo Jesus' alt mode would look like through leaked photos, but the truck was fully covered up. So the only thing that we can make of it was that the frame looked a lot different from what we had seen at the end of Bumblebee. For one, this one seems to feature reinforced bars on the front similar to B's alt mode, which has me thinking that this could be the overall theme of the movie, it kind of reminds me of the stealth modes from Transformers 3 when the Wreckers tweaked the Autobot members with guns and armor parts. So you can definitely get a vibe that the Autobots are beefing up to go on this next mission against the different factions. Anyways, as you can see, it looks like he'll possibly be getting a new color besides the traditional red and blue he's known for. This time around, he'll be sporting red and white, which may seem like a drastic change from what we're accustomed to, but he's featured different colors in other TF lore such as the cartoons and anime. Like the 2001 Transformers Robots in Disguise Optimus is probably one of the most different versions since it deviates from the OG colors and goes full on red. So I'd be all for this red and white deviation if it's legit. As it's been described, the robot mode for Optimus Prime will be very similar to how he looked in Bumblebee, except the vehicle form will be different and you'll see some of the different parts on him when he transforms. Speaking of transforming, it's important to note that we didn't see him actually transform in his newly scanned truck mode at the end of Bumblebee. We simply saw him standing with B as the Autobots arrived on Earth. So it's going to be cool seeing how all his truck parts look in motion as he transforms into his robot mode. But anyways, that's all we have for you guys today. We still don't have any photos for the other Autobots or Decepticons, and I'm pretty sure they're the only ones who will feature actual alt modes that are vehicles, since the Maximals, Predacons, and Terracons will more than likely just have fully CGI alt modes. So we'll just have to wait for more photos to surface. Until then, I'd like for you to leave a comment on what you think about the ones that we do have. Are you liking where the design team is going with them? And are you just as bummed that I am that Jazz isn't going to get his G1 accurate alt mode for this movie? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another Transformers video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code Rising Star Buddy. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video.